Thirty years ago, a simple married couple, a man working as a floor layer, and a woman working as a nursery school teacher, already having two kids, decided, due to difficult financial circumstances, not to have more children for the time being. The woman had her tubes tight. Nine months later, I was born. <laughs> My mom always jokes that I have been breaking barriers ever since I was conceived. Then they named me Honey. People always ask me if there's a real story behind my name. I wish there was a great, dramatic, emotional story. But I think my parents chose Honey because simply it was more unique than Ani and sounded better than Bunny. <laughs> Even though it had no compelling story of its own, my name would become an important part of my story. Starting with my name to my different identities as a Palestinian, Christian, Arab, young woman, and living under occupation, all my identities came with many restrictions and barriers, especially when football was always my dream. We all have multiple identities, like our gender, nationality, ethnicity, and many others. What identities do you have within yourself? Have your identities dictated your life, or even stood in the way of your dreams? Simply, as members of disadvantaged groups, these identities often come with many prejudices, stereotypes, physical restrictions, emotional stress, and social expectations. Our identities can become our prison. As a female growing up in a patriarchal society where football was a male activity, my gender was my prison. As a Palestinian, living all my life under occupation and oppression, my nationality was my prison. As an Arab living in the world today with prejudices, racism, negative stereotypes, my ethnicity was my prison. My parents went on to have two more children after me, I must really have broken that barrier. <laughs> Growing up as one of five children, all in one room, in an old house, my status became my prison. After multiple many injuries and not being able to play football anymore and pursue my dreams, my injury became my prison. Sometimes, People have even said that I smile too much and laugh too loud. Even my positivity and optimism became my prison. I tried to escape my presence by escaping my identities. But I soon realized that only through my identity I can find freedom, because our identities also come with great experiences and unique individualities. And when we embrace the uniqueness of our identities, we can find an unmatched and unstoppable determination. As a woman in an Arab society, my neighbors, my friends, even my family, were not happy with me playing football. Of course, because it's for boys. People called me tomboy. The neighbors were concerned that nobody would want to marry me in the future. There were no girls participating in the game, or no places for girls to play football. So I fought to play with the boys in the streets. But when my dad used to come back home and see me playing in the streets, 
he would get angry, especially when I came home every day with a new injury. He would punish me and make me promise not to play football again. But I never took no for an answer. I would go back to the streets again and again and play football with the boys, even with injuries and punishments. It is because of my identity I was determined to go on. When I joined Bethlehem University in 2003, we wanted to establish a women's football team. After many tries, we managed to get five girls to join the team. It was in 2004, only 10 years ago, when we started from nothing, with only five female players. And now we have hundreds of female players playing in 19 women's football clubs and four national teams for seniors, under 19, under 16, and under 14. We even see more and more women in the Palestine Football Association and in the Supreme Council of Youth and Sport. I even remember when we started a women's football team in one of the small conservative villages in Palestine in 2007, the parents and the community were completely against their daughters playing football. But the girls, who were 13 years old, were inspired. And later, their parents wanted their girls to play internationally and win, to make achievements in sports. It took a lot of convincing and hard work. Now, two of those girls are part of the Palestinian national women's football team. Today, when I walk with my dad in the old streets of Bethlehem and join the kids playing football, my dad smiles with pride. It was because of my identity that I was determined to make a difference. As a Palestinian, living my life under occupation, my nationality was my prison. We are surrounded by walls, checkpoints, prisons, and the denial of our very existence and identity. When I was in my last year in high school in 2002, it was the second intifada. I was ready to take my high school matriculation exams. These exams are considered to be a very big deal in Palestine and present a very stressful and difficult period for students. In addition to the stress of studying and taking these exams, we had more serious things to worry about. Every night, hundreds of soldiers will raid our house and send us out, regardless of the rain or the cold. There was non-stop shooting, bombing, gas, curfews, and dead bodies everywhere. On the morning of my history exam, we woke up to find my parents' car crushed by a tank. There were tanks and soldiers everywhere preventing us from passing through. And I didn't know how to go to my exam, but I was determined. Until I saw an ambulance passing by, I stopped the ambulance in order to give me a ride to my exam. But as soon as I got into, I found many other students packed inside going to take their exams. But as I sat around to write my exam, I couldn't remember anything. I started crying. And at that moment, all the other students started crying. It is moments like this make me wonder why I was born Palestinian. Why I couldn't have been born in Switzerland, for example. Why do we have to put up with this injustice every day in our life? As we were all crying in the exam hall, the teacher on duty reminded us of a saying by late Palestinian President Yasser Arafat, who said, Ya Jabal may that we Palestinians are like mountains. 
We cannot be moved by the winds. Drawing from our experiences and lives lived under occupation, it's amazing how much injustice and suffering we can endure. But it was because of my identity as a Palestinian, I found strength. In the midst of destruction and hopelessness, I found hope, and I was able to go on and succeed. As a captain of the national women's football team, a big moment in my career was to play the first international women's football match to take place in Palestine in 2009. It was the dream that I was waiting for. We were playing against Jordan with 4,000 spectators. But two days before the game, as I was training with my team, I had a very bad injury. My knee ligament was ruptured, and I couldn't play that game. It was one of the saddest moments in my life. In the next years, I went on surgeries, therapy, in order to play football again. But another injury prevented me from ever playing football again. Even my injury stood in the way of my dream. Another wall and another barrier, but also another opportunity. If it wasn't for my injury, I wouldn't have worked in developing sports programs for children all over Palestine, and later joined the FIFA Masters and work at FIFA. It was because of my injury that I was determined to go on to dedicate my work for development and equality through sports programs. As a Palestinian Arab holding a Palestinian passport and no formally recognized state, although we have two governments, traveling has always been an interesting experience. I can't tell you how many connecting flights I missed because passport control officers couldn't find Palestine as an option on, the, on their computers. When we traveled with the national team to participate in international tournaments, we had to go through many checkpoints. Hours and hours of waiting and traveling for days to get anywhere. But despite of the humiliation and the delays, we had the best times of our lives ever. And for the first time ever, we played on international natural grass fields. As a Palestinian Christian Arab, meeting people from all around the world, people always try to define me. The most common questions I get are if I drink alcohol, or if I wear a bikini. <laughs> People always try to categorize us and put us in boxes. But we all have unique, complex identities that go much beyond alcohol or bikini. It was because of my identity as a Palestinian Christian that I wanted to make a difference to change stereotypes, and to celebrate the diversity and the tolerance in the Palestinian society. For me, it all started with my passion to football, but soon it became much more than football. It was about change, justice, equality, and life. It was not only because of my identity that I found freedom. It was because of who I am that I was liberated and I was able to break out of my prison and to keep on going and achieving. Ever since my conception, I was breaking barriers. And today, when I pass through checkpoints, even my name makes the most brutal of occupation soldiers break an uncontrollable smile. 
We all have different identities and the presence that we confront every day. It is not only about my identities or even about my presence. We all have hidden presence. Economic, social, emotional, or even by accepting the status quo. Stop letting your identities confine you and start embracing the unique of your identity for it liberates you and liberates others through you. For me, on the field and in football, the world has no limits, no walls, no presence. Find your freedom in your own self. As a prominent Palestinian poet, Mahmoud Darwish said, حريتي أن أكون ما لا يريدون لي أن أكون. My freedom is to be what they don't want me to be. Thank you.